Well, good morning, everybody. Um, this is really awesome. And now I know how old everybody is, sort of. Um, so, so I am here from East Tennessee State University. I have been fortunate enough uh, to be there for a decade now, which sounds crazy, because I always think of myself as the new person um, on campus, and I obviously am not that. Uh, but I have uh, been fortunate enough to have lots of great leadership uh, and some of the things I'm going to talk about today in terms of uh, innovation and disruption and definitely being uncomfortable, um, still pretty uncomfortable most days, um, but that's okay, that's part of it, uh, is uh, in, in, in thanks to the leadership that believes in this idea that I'm going to talk to you about today in my story. But I also want to make sure I thank Eastman because Eastman has been an amazing partner. We have great interns here. We have great employees that have come out of my program here, and we're doing some really great innovative projects with Eastman. So the fact that we're doing this together is, uh, you know, it totally makes sense. So what I want to leave you with today is basically a few points. I want to kind of talk about what this disruption is through my own story and what we're doing, uh, the innovation that we're doing at East Tennessee State University. Uh, in terms of digital marketing and all those pieces that are part of a digital marketing uh, education and the, the, uh, the innovation and really the silo busting that has to happen there. Um, but then I want you as leaders and as folks that participate in teams to have some takeaways in terms of really how am I doing this and what does the research help us uh, create the opportunities and the culture to be able to do that. Um, but I'm going to open things up with this idea and introduce you to what is called, uh, what I think is we are now into, which is the experience age. So we all just had a media experience together. Um, some of us may have felt uncomfortable um, watching this guy on the side of a cliff. Uh, some of us may have just said, that's just amazing, never am I gonna do that. And some of us may go, I, I do stuff like that around here every weekend. Maybe not, but this great mountain biking here. Um, and so that might have been part of your experience. But the thing is, while we shared this media experience, it was different for all of us, right? And so as somebody that is a consumer of media experiences, as we all are on these kinds of things, right? Uh, we, we, the bar is being raised. When, when we are sharing these experiences, we have the ability to, to share experiences with each other and with large groups of people. Now, I'm the department chair of a department of media and communication. My responsibility and, and my great privilege is to get students ready to be able to be in the space to create these experiences. Well, how do you do that? Can I just sit around in a, in a discussion and have a discussion about how do you think they did this video? How do you think, what do you think went into it? I mean, we can do those kinds of things, but what we really need to do is put students in the space to be able to create the experiences, to really understand what it takes to produce something like that. How many cameras do we need? How many people do we need? What's the production schedule? What's the script look like? What's the budget, right? What are all these things? And then let's go do it, right? So that's really how we are innovating at East Tennessee State University with our program and with all of our partners across this interdisciplinary idea. And, and that's really what I'm going to talk to you about today is how we're trying to activate that uh, disruption of education and create 44, in this case, the idea of creating 44 million experiences, right? So uh, I am a pracademic. Uh, I'm someone that loves to do the work, uh, and I happened in, into academic space because of the fact I was at a great company called Nielsen, and I really wanted to work for my clients. And so I went back to school, graduate school, to, to study research method, and had some great mentors. And uh, you're going to hear about the importance of great mentors today uh, from some of our speakers who were just awesome last night when I saw them uh, at dinner. But the, the thing is, I had some great mentors that said, you know, you should think about education. I thought, I'm not worthy. Uh, and all of a sudden, now I'm a, a professor at East Tennessee State University, and now all of a sudden I'm a chair. So who would have guessed any of these things? But the point is that I'm still a, a practitioner. That's what my identity is wrapped up in. 
education and practitioner. And so it's really important for me to be that, and it's really important for me to be in the space. So I have the honor to work for a place called Creative Energy. Many of you probably know of it. Um, and I have great mentors there like Tony Teresa Treadway, uh, Will Griffith, Sam Barnett, working for really great brands. I stay current in what's happening. That feeds my classroom. That feeds where we went with this little company called Adobe. So May 4th, we announced at East Tennessee State University that we were the very first university in the nation to have an academic alliance with Adobe for Adobe's marketing cloud at the enterprise level. Okay, so really quick, that means that these experiences that you and I have on these little devices and on all these different screens are delivered from 45 out of the top 50 Fortune 500 companies on the Adobe marketing cloud. Most of us don't know that. Um, but what you also don't know is that there's a tremendous amount of jobs that are attached to this. And so really creating a new program at East Tennessee State University that's interdisciplinary, that puts students in the space where they actually are working on real projects, have real outcomes, work on this stuff in classrooms, but then are assigned to different campus units and different types of uh, really great nonprofit and things that are happening even here at Eastman, opportunities to graduate with a year or two experience before they even finish school. And at the same time, bringing those resources to the university to transform the experiences that are happening at the university, to really get these students into this digital economy. And through this, we are really a, a, an Adobe uh, inst model institution. And so why Adobe? Because Adobe, we all know about Adobe and Creative Cloud, right? Photoshop and design, those kinds of things. But like I said, most of us don't understand that thousands of companies are on the Adobe Marketing Cloud. And they are the leader in this space of creating and connecting this ecosystem of digital experiences for consumers. So let me tell you a little bit about my story and, and, and why I'm standing up here, I guess, probably. Uh, you know, it really breaks down into two different stories, two different narratives. The first one where you have these two guys and they're, and they're looking at a screen. And so if you think about creative cloud and you think about graphic design, there, you, there was a time where graphic design was taught with, you know, uh, with not, not with computers, right? And so then as industry adopts, Ad, uh, adopts uh, technology, education says, wait a second, we need to start doing this. And then the programs that do it are the innovative programs until it diffuses, through that diffusion of innovation, it diffuses until the majority of programs are teaching with graphic design software because that's where the industry is, right? And then, you know, maybe us parents out here are going, you're not going to send, well, I'm not sending my kid to that school because they're not even using computers yet. Well, folks, this is where the digital marketing space is. It is at the very beginning of that curve. So on the other side here, you've got one of my idols, Dizzy Gillespie. And so imagine you are a music student. And imagine you are sitting in class with Dizzy Gillespie. And Dizzy Gillespie is going, and you're studying trumpet. I see some brass down here, right? But you're studying trumpet. And Dizzy Gillespie is your professor. And he's telling you, here's music theory. This is bebop language. Uh, you know, this is what it's like to play in a trio. This is what it's like to play in an orchestra. And you're going, dude, give me a damn trumpet. <laughs> right? Because you don't have a trumpet. And you're in a music class. That's how I felt in my space. Somebody that gets to work on the back end of Coca-Cola websites but doesn't get to get my students in that same space. I have to talk to them about it. I have to explain to them what the world's like, but they don't actually get to do it, right? So that was a frustration for me. That's why I'm here today, and that's what we're doing at ETSU. I and mean, we're giving everybody a trumpet, right? So let's talk about this idea of disruption. Um, di disruption is basically a product that addresses a market that previously it has not been addressed, okay? So we can go through lots of different disruption models. And really, education still does not have the killer app. Because education is not like Uber. And education is not like the iPhone that basically destructively innovated a whole bunch of different industries, right? Education is way more complicated. You know, we have really great 
uh, online learning tools. We're trying, you know, massive online lectures. We're trying all these different things. There's no killer app that's going to innovate education. It takes a whole bunch of different things. But I would argue that the most powerful thing that needs to happen is to create experiences and to give students the opportunity that no matter what space they're in, that they are able to build skills within their liberal arts background. Something that differentiates them in the marketplace and the way that they do that is through real application. This is what we're doing. So how do you do that? You know, if you're a team leader or you're an educator or you're a student, what kinds of things should you think about? You should think about this idea of being T-shaped. Not a concept I you know, innovated or, or created myself. It's, there's a lot of really great literature on it, right? But it's the idea of you have this breadth of knowledge that makes you who you are, but then you have this really deep skill set that you have developed that differentiates you in the marketplace. If you haven't read, uh, if you haven't read Newport's book, this is a really great book of why this is important. You know, it's this idea of really, you know, we talk about you follow your passion. Well, that's really great. That's a, that's a romantic thing to say. But the thing that is most important is you find yourself, and if you can match your, your passion to your skill, that's the best thing, right? I continue to do that, and I'm lucky. But not a lot of people can find that. So find a skill that differentiates you and really make that something that you, are, that you use in the marketplace. So if we are a team leader and we're thinking about how do we teach our, how do we get our teams thinking in this way? Again, the skill development and encouragement. This is an investment of resources. It could be paying somebody to do some training. It also could be just giving people time to move forward uh, in a space. Set up routine feedback cycles. That way, when you are uh, trying to critique somebody, it doesn't seem like you're smacking them down. You're actually, this is just what we typically do. We do this with students all the time, right? So why not think about this in terms of your teams? You know, so you, when you sit down for five minutes once a week, you're saying the good and you're able to deliver some of the things that you want to critique that could be better, right? This is the hardest thing right here. I can tell you, being at an education institution and presenting this idea and this concept to a lot of different audiences, um, and, and a lot of times with Adobe folks, this is the hardest thing. Getting these silos to break down, getting these teams to work together so that they can be empathetic to one another's needs. This is where the true collaboration is, and this is really, I think, the hardest thing to do. Probably the most important thing to do always is to listen. So in my organization, every single person in my organization has a voice, they have my ear, they have my respect, and they know that there's not really a hierarchy, that I learn from every single person, and my ears are open all the time. So it's, this is probably the most important thing that you can possibly do to innovate. But don't let my title be the all in all, because we all have really great business models. Um, a lot of times we have really great business models, and a lot of times we're really um, great with our loyal customer base and everything. We don't have to disrupt everything. But you should ask the question, what if we tried something else? You know, what if we did something else? So, my, my last little things I want to say here is thank you very much. The experience age is here. And uh, if you have anyone who is interested in talking about or you yourself want to talk to me about what we're doing at ETSU, I welcome that. Um, and I just want to thank Eastman and East Tennessee State University for this amazing event. So thank you all.